author and lecturer Jay Siegert holds degrees in both physics and engineering. As co-founder and executive director of the Creation Education Center, Jay passionately seeks to help people establish a biblical worldview based on the authority of Scripture, starting with the book of Genesis. For the past 26 years, he has been graciously tackling tough questions people have regarding the Christian faith, especially in the often intimidating world of science, bringing it down to a level that everyone can understand. We trust that you will enjoy this 12-part seminar as Jay presents Foundations in Creation. Here's an interesting admission from Dr. Scott Todd from K-State University. He said, even if all the data point to an intelligent designer, such an hypothesis is excluded from science because it's not naturalistic. So he's admitting even if all the data point to there being an intelligent designer, a creator, a god, we're just going to rule that out because that's not a natural explanation and we're only looking for natural explanations. Here's a couple of humorous quotes from Albert Einstein. He said, once you can accept the universe as being something expanding into an infinite nothing which is something, wearing stripes with plaid is easy. And then he also said, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. <laughs> and his point here was that he's not quite that sure about the universe, but he knows that there are really no limits to the crazy things that people will think and believe, and that's what we observe. How did this happen by accident? And when it operates, this thing spins around very fast. It builds itself. It's cooled down by water. It moves by protons. It can go forwards and reverse. In fact, this thing can spin up to 100,000 RPM and it can reverse within a quarter of a turn. None of the engines we produce today can come even close to this. When you think about the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, you think of scenes that look like this. Um, you're very comfortable with that, but you just don't really know where to stick a dinosaur in there. They just don't seem to fit. But dinosaurs do seem to fit with scenes much more like this and the idea of evolution in millions of years, a world that is very, very different than the world we live in today. Why do we think of this? Because this is pretty much what we're taught you know, from young on up. What's also interesting is if you took the earth and smoothed it out like a cue ball, nice and flat, push the mountains down, raise up the trenches and all that, there's enough water in the earth today to cover it 1.7 miles deep. That is a lot of water on the earth today. So what happened to the water after the flood? Well, again, I think the Bible gives us a clue about that. And often what can happen is someone can go to a seminar and hear some fascinating information. They get all excited about it. And then they go out in the real world and they run into someone like a skeptic. And the skeptic says, oh, evolution is an absolute fact and the Bible is a myth. And then the Christian says, no, um, uh, the Bible is true and creation is true because I, I heard the speaker and he said uh, something about DNA. And that's about all the farther they can take it. And then the skeptic says, oh, something about DNA. Wow, that's really impressive. And then the Christian is kind of frustrated because they just can't remember all the details.